In the constantly changing world of fundability, the big question is this. How are entrepreneurs and real estate investors like us, ones who want to grow our businesses and who are tired of paying for really expensive alternative lending, how do we tap into the most inexpensive money available and do it without the hassle of typical borrowing? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. Welcome to the Get Fundable Podcast with your host, Merrill Chandler. Welcome back, everybody. Merrill Chandler here with the Get Fundable Podcast. And I am, uh, tax season is upon us, and I've got a great episode for you to, about tax scams, people who are doing things um, to impersonate you filing tax returns in your name so that they can borrow money later. Whole grip of awesome stuff for us to discover in this episode. So when we come back, we're going to do a deep dive into um, how people are impersonating you and or trying to scam you. I'll see you in just a moment. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Meryl Chandler with the Get Fundable Universe, your host of the Get Fundable podcast. So today, We're going to be talking about it's tax season. And uh, last year they had a whole bunch of uh, of uh, uh, delays and postponements of dates, et cetera. Um, COVID's with the vaccine, all these other things happening. They seem to be calming down a little bit. But what's not calming down is the scams and the the what FICO calls the fraudsters who are using your tax information to file uh to file your taxes in your place and or trying to scam you so that's what we're going to talk about today and and this is kind of a sore subject for me simply because um as we learned at fico um 19 we we attended a a, a, one of the courses that we went through at fico 19 and they actually had an entire course on on fraudsters long game I mean, literally fraudsters long game and that long game is how they are willing to do uh, much more work than just steal your identity or 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 hack your data and file in your name. Fraudsters are are, are capable and willing now to set up long term cons, as it were, where they're conning, not you, but they're conning the IRS. So let's let's take a look. And we'll start out small and we'll grow grow up out to the bigger and more insidious, more evil, more ugly versions of uh, trying to impersonate you. So first thing, if you're listening and you're not anywhere near uh, uh, April 15th, then this information is still important to you. You need to pay attention because most of us, most of us human beings have a tenuous or fearful relationship with authority figures. And there is no greater authority figure in our lives. There's no bigger boogeyman than the IRS. And so sometimes when we get a phone call, somebody saying that they're from the IRS, we get an email, somebody impersonating uh, uh, an agent at the IRS, we go into what, what did I do wrong? What happened? And how do I fix this? We go into panic mode. We go in, we don't go into fight mode. We go into flight mode. And so we need to know the truth from error here. You guys, we need to know the truth of what's actually happening. And of course you can count on that from me and from, from my podcast, the, our Facebook lives, the truth you trust uh, series, et cetera. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, some of you, many of you may have, received a phone call and it's it's kind of a daunting phone call you guys a phone call saying they're representing the irs number one number two is that they demand they give you a phone number and they demand that you call back to make arrangements because you owe taxes or fees and sometimes their language is really sophisticated, right? Not do you just owe back taxes, but there has been an um, there has been a change on your most recent tax returns, and now you owe taxes. So they're playing the game that the IRS, as the IRS in truth sometimes does, is they send a letter and say, "By the way, 
there's been adjustments. You need to account for this and you owe more taxes. Well, these fraudsters are taking that exact same tax, but they're going to do it from your, from, uh, from a phone call. Now, they say that you owe taxes, you owe fees, or more importantly, listen for you owe late fees or charges, right? If you don't pay, they're saying that they're, the, it's depending on the language, they'll say that they're, the, the, the offense is so egregious or that you are so far behind that if you don't pay, you risk arrest, all right? You risk arrest. Now, Sometimes they will key, they will ask you to key in either the last four digits of your social security number or all your social security number. Um, now, and this is really important. They they will say, in order to make sure you comply, they will suspend your social security benefits, like they have leverage over you. Now, notice if they're talking about social security benefits, many times these are. Uh, they are attacking or, or these fraudsters are going after uh, our elders and our wise ones. So, um, so if they're attacking the senior markets, then there may be even more fear or panic. Um, I, I, just a commentary, the Gen Zs are, 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 are more likely to fight against the, uh, the man than the, the boomers. All right. So, just listen for the language. Now, let's get a little, let, let, let's get, what's the truth? The truth you can trust. Number one, they do not suspend your social security. The IRS nor the social security administration is going to ever suspend your social security benefits. That is a right earned. Now, they may, the, the real IRS may tax social security benefits based on certain things, but they're not going to suspend them. Everybody with me? Follow me. They are not going to suspend them. Number two, it has been 50, 60 years since the IRS has arrested somebody without a trial first. Normally, the real IRS is going to go through a legal process, including filing a judgment or a cause of action against you, calling you to defend yourself, getting an, and then only if found guilty will, uh, will uh, uh, offer a, or um, uh, uh, engage a, an arrest warrant. No one's going to arrest you, especially the folks <laughs> that are leaving this message on the phone. They will not uh, arrest you or threaten to arrest you. Iris will not do that. It comes through legal channels. If that were ever, if you were horrible and did, um, uh, I don't know, the, the old Wesley Snipes of, uh, of years and years ago where he was, he was arrested for failure to pay millions of dollars in taxes. Problem is he went through a several year litigation process before that occurred. So there's not going to be any arrest for you. Um, there's not, they will not threaten to arrest you. And the IRS doesn't say, Hey, please surrender yourself for arrest at your local sheriff's uh, jail. Not going to happen. Um, next they, um, you are never, ever, 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 ever to provide your personal information over the phone. You don't leave it on a, re a recording. You do not call. First of all, if they say, if they demand a call back, you're not going to call back. It's nonsense. The IRS does not communicate via phone. If it, the real IRS will send you a letter and that letter will have instructions for you to follow, including you owe these taxes, please call our number so we can make arrangements for payment. You're never going to get a phone call from them. You're going to get a letter through the USPS, the United States Postal Service, which leads us. Um, and if you owe taxes, you're going to receive this correspondence by mail first, right? And if you do owe taxes and you receive a bill from the IRS, it's going to have you contact or sent a, a, a link to pay through a tr U.S. Treasury website, not even an IRS website. It's a U.S. Treasury website. Now, this leads us to the next. I said, you're going to get all your communication 
through the mail from the real IRS. The next scam out there, the next phishing, as they call it with a PH, the next phishing scam is that uh, you might receive an email that supposedly comes from the IRS, right? They may have, that may look like a legitimate logo. First of all, watch, for, carefully read anything you receive for grammatical errors, spelling and typos. If there is, if it sounds like it's a foreign translation into English, it guaranteed it's a foreign translation into English because the perpetrators are all over the world. It could be a, a sourced from the United States, but many of these scams do not. They come from Eastern Europe. They come from North Africa. They come from the Far East. Okay, so uh, do not, do not, um, yeah, do not. Uh, uh, these emails are going to come now also look in the, uh, in the um, web browser. If there, if there is a website they send you to, it should say irs.gov and then whatever subsequent page is after that. It's, it's never, and it should be HTTPS for secured. If it's just HTTP, Likely not the IRS, but it's got to say irs.gov. It can't say um, makeapayment.gov slash IRS because that makeapayment.gov can be anybody. It's got to say irs.gov and then any subsequent any subsequent page with an HTTPS for and the S means stands for it's a secured site. All right. You um, also these emails may invite you to click a link to take you to, uh, to file your return or ask for a refund. Sometimes they'll ask you and say, if you would like it overnight, please pay a COD fee, a, a, a collect on deposit, uh, a collect on delivery fee. Like send us overnight $27 and we'll overnight your refund to you that do not pay for anything before services are rendered. So that is complete bunk and part of the con. Um, now they may ask for a temporary, uh, they may be, go as far as putting in, asking for you to register a password. And we do not do passwords online. The, 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 the IRS doesn't have, uh, there is, there is a, an SSA, uh, uh, Social Security Administration. You can have a password as part of accessing information about your uh, retirement funds, right? Your Social Security funds. But the IRS doesn't ask you through an email to register for a, a site because once you're in that fake site, they're going to ask you for information which they're going to use to run their con on you, run their scam. Now... You, uh, you be very careful if it doesn't say irs.gov. It can't say, like I said, make a payment dot com irs slash gov. That is not a real site. All right. Now, what you need to know is that uh, uh, IRS doesn't text you, doesn't email you, will not contact you via social media. And as we said above, will not call you. Fake IRS emails um, have uh, legitimate IRS notices, uh, meaning it'll say something like IRS important notice. Well, if you open up a, an IRS notice, it'll say IRS important notice in the, in the letter that is sent to you. But in email, they're just copying that language to appear, uh, to appear um, uh, legitimate. And it may even have a legitimate right now. You can go to the IRS and take a screenshot of, of an IRS logo and make one yourself. So it may look like a legitimate IRS logo. It is not, uh, it, it is not associated with a legitimate IRS communication with you. <clears throat> and then um, the, and be careful that if you click a link in that email, even to just go test it, Less so for Macintoshes, but very much so for Windows computers. It may load malware, tracking software, or the worst scam of all, the worst scam of all, the IRS may, uh, notice may lead you into hostageware. 
where they take over your computer and you have to send them a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks for them to, to give you back your computer. And most of us don't. And so we got to wipe everything. And if you don't have a backup, you are in a very bad place. So uh, it, 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 it's vital, you guys, that you do not send, uh, that you do not click a link inside of those emails. Now, Let's get to the heavy. Oh, and by the way, uh, we'll put it in the we'll put it in the in the notes. But if you do get one of these, then report the email to phishing at irs.gov. That's p h i s h fish with a p h phishing at irs.gov, so that they can track and uh, track down the the uh, the. Uh, DNS servers that they can track down the IP addresses and, and we can kind of uh, help regulate against these scams and cons. Now there are, now there is two other versions that also make this a really, this is the long game I started out with. So first of all, there are fraudulent tax preparers and they will hang out a shingle and they will collect all of your information and they, and one of two things, they will help you file, but they will redirect and change the account number for you, for your refunds to be deposited into. So if they're filling out the software that may be fraudulent software, there are just be careful. There are fraudulent tax preparers who will have your returns sent directly to their accounts and you have no power over that. Number two, there are folks who will file, there are fraudsters who will file uh, a, 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 a tax return claiming that you make, let, let's, let's say make uh, $900,000 a year and the file, and it looks completely legit. They've got a, a, a uh, the, the schedule C has all your income, your expenses from, from your LLC or whatever. And they fill out taxes and file those taxes. Now, why would they do that? Why would they go through that entire mess? Because if they have access to your um, to your name, social security number, date of birth, and your other identity information, they can then use those taxes that you filed and do full doc loans in your name using those tax returns as the as the uh, as the proof point right the proof documents are actually these fake returns so you may go in and you may and they may ask for a hundred thousand uh, dollar uh, a line of credit and then say oh here's my taxes and here's my financials and prove up all of these documents and then get a loan in your name using that using those tax returns you guys, that is a wicked long game. And the problem is, is that only building your PBID so that there's only one version of your name that the underwriting software rec recommend, uh, recognizes and making sure that you are up to date on your current taxes, because if they can go two years filing in your name, and you haven't filed taxes to kind of throw up a red flag. Whoa, hold it. This person says they make 200 grand. This per and the same person says in the same year they made 900 grand. That's where they're going to find out there's a problem. And then the IRS will reach out to you and say, pick a return, right? And that's when you'll know. What uh, true story. One of our, we've had it happen several times over the years, but one of our clients recently, about last year, um, went through this process and called up and said, I just, try, I just filed uh, my back taxes and I got this letter. Please look at it. IRS letter got mailed. Didn't, wasn't an email, wasn't a phone call. IRS letter comes in and says, there is there uh, something to the effect. There is uh, your, you have two sets of tax returns that cannot be reconciled in our offices. Please call this number. You may, fraud may have been perpetrated in your name. They were able to get, they were able to, uh, they made the phone call, spoke with, uh, with a legit IRS rep and were able to disavow and get rid of the other taxes, uh, tax returns 
before someone had seasoned them long enough to do more damage by filing an application in their name. You guys, this is bad juju. We have got to stay vigilant. We have got to create clarity and be up to date in all of our, keeping the databases, including the IRS, keeping all databases with one version of our of our identity, one version, so that everybody knows how much we're making, right through through the FICO, uh, the FICO Falcon fraud detection software, right? Those databases, LexisNexis, etc., and the IRS. Now, while the IRS database does not link with these other databases, it is the proof of point. And uh, uh, back, uh, uh, we did a, a a little while ago, we did a. Uh, filing your taxes and getting a mortgage and 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 doing what's called a 4506T. And T stands for transcript. And 4506OT, uh, OT, 4506T is uh, the uh, uh, IRS form that you can sign, which allows a lender to at any time request a transcript of your taxes. But many lenders will look at a fundable profile and will lend to you via that profile without actually pulling your taxes. So do know the difference. And in this, in this client's case, there was not enough time. They caught it. The client was able to get hold of the IRS and clean this mess up before the fraudsters were able to uh, file, uh, file for credit using that. Uh, fraudulent tax return. Guys, it is a con. The beautiful thing is, is that if you know the rules of this game, we can protect ourselves and we can protect our loved ones. And we can make sure that there are no, that we minimize, if not completely eliminate the risks of, of borrowing other people's money. Take care of each other. This is Merrill Chandler your host of the Get Fundable podcast. And it's always a pleasure to take on these particular uh, issues and, and so we can all level up and, and be prepared, take better care of ourselves. Have a great night. Thank you for listening to the Get Fundable podcast. Please leave comments because Meryl would love to read about your aha moments from this episode. And be sure to visit GetFundable.com to read our blog, get important links, join our community, and much, much more, like ordering Meryl's tell-all book that is changing the world, The New F Word. And you got to tell your friends about this podcast, because we want them to get fundable too.